Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video, I would like to show you a practical implementation of a write-ahead log in a di distributed system. And when I talk about distributed systems, I don't necessarily think about microservices. The problem with microservices, or at least the problem with the way that we do microservices today, is that a lot of the challenges and patterns and things that are important for distributed systems are abstracted away from us by the tooling that we use or by the infrastructure that we use. And the big challenge for us developers is that AI becomes better and better and writes always better code. So I think it's very important for us to understand at least one layer of abstraction below the tooling that we use nowadays or below the infrastructure that we use nowadays. That's why I have started to build my own distributed database so that I can go through all the challenges and different patterns of distributed systems and that I will bring them to you and explain them and try to understand exactly how systems actually really work. Don't get too hyped. I don't really want to build the next possible Cosmos DB or Rocks DB or Cassandra or whatever. It's just for learning purposes so that we better understand the concepts and the challenges that we have in distributed systems in general, not only in microservices and having APIs running on different servers. That's not really 100% distributed or it is distributed, but us as developers, we don't get in touch with the patterns and challenges of the distribution itself. Therefore, in this video, I would like to tackle the first such challenge, or let's call it even a pattern, in distributed systems, which is the write-ahead log. This is a family of techniques used to ensure atomicity and durability in distributed systems. And yes, I guess you already noticed it. These are two of the ACID principles that we know from relational databases. So let's understand first why do we actually need this concept of write-ahead log. So let's imagine that we have a server, it could be a database server, it doesn't really matter, an SQL server. And let's assume that we are in the middle of the transaction. So we want to do some things in a certain order that involves performing different types of operations. And we want to have all these operations either succeed all at once or together, or to fail all together. Now, while we are doing this, imagine we are the server itself, we are doing the job right now, we are working hard on that, and well, suddenly we lose power, so we can't really continue what we've done. Obviously, it could be that in one minute or five minutes or one hour, whatever it takes, we will have the power back. Now, the question is, how do we continue? Or how do we know exactly what we were doing? How do we know exactly if the things that we were doing are in a consistent state? It could be that we have performed some actions from the transactions, but we didn't perform some others. So our data might be in a very, very inconsistent state. So how do we tackle this? Well, write-ahead log comes to the rescue in this type of scenario. The idea of a write-ahead log is that before you even start to do the persistence or to do that sp or those specific operations, you just write to a file on disk what exactly you are about to do. The thing is that if you lose power basically in or while you try to achieve the stuff in those transactions, for instance, when you come back, you can take a look into your write ahead log, into your log and see exactly, okay, I was doing this and I was doing this. So you can then check with your database how much from those operations did I manage to complete. And then I can do some decisions or I can make some decisions. Should I continue basically or maybe should I continue the other operations that are left undone? but maybe I, I can do that. So in that case, it could be another option that I would think, okay, let's maybe revert what we have done and try to reapply the entire, the entire transaction once again, or simply just do nothing. That could also be an option. But without this idea of a write-ahead log, this whole thing wouldn't be possible. So if we try to simplify it and boil it down to only one very simple sentence, the whole idea of the write-ahead log is that before you do the operation, you actually log a comment or something about the thing that you want to do. And in case something happens, you can always come back to that log file and check exactly what you were doing. And actually, you can even rebuild the entire state of your system based on what you have in the write-ahead log. Now, let's move over to JetBrains Rider and take a look into how I implemented very basic write-ahead logging for very simple operations in the distributed system I am working with. So here I am in my Code Wrinkles DB solution where I have a lot of different projects right now because I have already implemented some of the very basic cluster management features that I will talk about in other videos if you are interested. So drop a comment and let me know 
if you want more videos on topics related to distributed systems and how we can practically implement them. So here I have a dedicated project which is called this Call Wrinkles DB WAL, which is the acronym for a write ahead log. And as a, this is a very simple implementation, don't take it at, as it is op optimal. I just want to use these patterns so that I can explain them. I am really not concerned about things like performance and how do we handle flashes on the files and all the stuff that's brought actually by the underlying infrastructure that we are working with. I just want to concentrate on the functionality itself. So what I have here is, for instance, I have this very basic class, which is a log. Now, this log contains some very important information. It would contain a key, which is or should be a unique key in the write ahead log. So, in the log file where we will have our files, it should be unique. Then we have this string data. Usually, here you would have a byte array data, uh, but I use this as a string because I will just use for simplicity JSON strings that I will persist basically in my write ahead log. Then a daytime offset that will specify the timestamp and also a log type. Log type is an enum that has different possible values right now in my system. I want to, or I will have logs that either are an insert advertise node, an update, update advertise node, or the index increment, which will actually try to take care about this other concept of using a dis distributed keys for the write ahead logs through all your nodes in your entire distributed system. But also this might be a topic for a different video if you think it's something interesting, so please let me know. Now, there are two things that I still have in this log file. There is an override for the two string, which will result in a string that will try to persist in our write ahead log. And it's a very simple one. I have used this character basically as the limiter so that I can do easily a split on the string when I read the log and I get basically a line of text and I want to build a log instance from that line of text. So I just simply split on that. And then I know the exact order of the different stuff that we have there. So I know which exactly is my key, which exactly is the log type, which exactly is the string, the data, which is the timestamp and so on and so forth. So that's the very, very basic log. Now, when it comes to this write ahead log, I think I need two or three different things regarding the infrastructure. The infrastructure, I mean, we need to write to files. So therefore, I have, for instance, here a file manager. Now, the concept of this file manager is simply to handle or to manage, as the name implies, files and directories, folders on our disks where we can write different logs. Right now, the entire system is fairly simple. So I just have one simple log file, but you will see that in the future, we'll have other videos and we'll tackle other more complex topic like segmented logging, where we will have to kind of like do a lot of operation with the different uh, uh, log files and know exactly when to move to another log file and so on and so forth. So we'll definitely need a file manager. Right now, I have here the very, very basic functionality of making sure when a node, for instance, starts up for the very first time that we have a folder where we can write a log and that we have a log file path template that we will use. And here I have, for instance, the get current log file path, which will look, for instance, if we have a current log file, active log file in which we can log. And here, for instance, we get or create a directory. So we take a look if the directory already exists where we want to place our logs. If not, we will create them. We will get the files in that specific directory. Now, it could be when we start up for the very first time that I don't have any log files there. So if the length is zero, then I want to create a new file where I will place my logs. And if we already have a file, then, well, I want to get the latest log file because I might have different log files. And the way things go, for instance, is that I want to store log files per each day. So we'll enhance the logic for this in a very short future to kind of like look at the day. And if you don't have a log file that corresponds to the day, the log file would automatically be created. Then besides this file manager, we have this file logger, which is responsible to actually do the real stuff or, well, working with logs or inserting logs or reading logs or whatever. So the file logger right now has only one very simple method, which is insert log async, which takes in obviously a log and the log file path. And then we use a stream writer to simply just write this log or append this log basically to what we have or to the existing file on this specific file path. And last but not least, we have this log reader. Now this log reader will actually be very important even right now, because as said, one of the major advantages of having a write ahead log is that it enables you to actually rebuild the state of your system. And in a very simple, or way in this current application, we already do this. 
because we have those indexes or those keys. How do we know exactly what key should we use for a new log entry? So what we do if, this, if, if the node goes down, for instance, and then it starts up again, it needs to basically know exactly, okay, what will be basically the next index that I will have to use when a new log will be created. And therefore we have this read last log index async. And here we use the stream reader and we want to look through all the lines. And then what we will do here is, okay, if the last line is not empty, then I will create from string and then I will return the key from the last log, which means that if I return this key, the next log should obviously have a logical increment of the key that we return there. So you see, this is already an application use case of a write ahead log where when my system starts up, it checks exactly, okay, what is the last key that I have used so that, so that I can know or that I know that I need to use a new key or the next available key when I do this. And for this, I have a dedicated service, but I really don't want to talk about this service right now a lot. It is, it is the, this indexer. And here we see that basically the first thing that we have or the first method that we call basically in this service, the indexer, which is responsible to understand or to implement this concept of distributed indexes or distributed keys to all the services is that I just want to rebuild the index state. We have this current index, so this is only in memory. So you can definitely also use this idea of write ahead logs, not only if you want to persist something in a database, but even if you just want to be able to rebuild state that you will hold in memory, like it is the current index here. And last but not least, we have this write ahead logger, which is a class that implements also the interface that I write ahead logger. And here we have right now only two very simple methods. But you can see that this method is insert advertised node async, which takes in an information about the node, which already comes in string format, which I would assume is a JSON. And the only thing that we do here is we use the file manager, get current log file path. Then we use the indexer to get the next index, so the next available index. Then we create a new log. We specify as the log type that this is an insert advertised node. And then we simply just use the file logger to insert the log to the file. So that's basically it. The same way we do for the update advertised node when we need to do an update on an already persisted advertised node. Here is just a simple update. So we use this log type update advertised node, but this is actually the same thing. Now, let me show you where everything basically is brought together. So in this other project called Wrinkles DB node management, which handles or implements basically logic for cluster management and node management in a distributed system, I have this discovery folder and here I have this node discovery manager. Now the whole concept of the node discovery manager is that it's kind of like a service or it provides the functionality for a node to listen for other nodes that are present or that try to join the network and to do something based on that. Right now, as it is at the very beginning stage of the application, what we have here is some operations that we might want to do on nodes. So if I start up node one, for instance, and it gets online, but it's the only node that we have in the system right now. So when a new node joins the system and wants to become part of our distributed system, all the nodes that are already there need to kind of like have this information about the node. So the idea is that we advertise each time a new node joins the system and we have listeners in each node that will listen to those advertisements. And when such an advertisement comes in, the idea is that each node should hold or should persist information of the other available nodes. Now, right now in the system or at the beginning, all the nodes will be in a state where they are not a leader, they are not followers. So it's not really clear unless we'll kind of like build a system that will be able to elect a leader and then kind of like implement some more functionality. But for now, we already have this task. So we have, or let's think about us as the active node. So I am a node right now and I get the message that, hey, another node has just joined or wants to join. So I want to persist the information about the second node. I want to persist it in my database or the data store that I am using. So the thing is that if I start persisting it and I might go down, then I don't know about this. So I'm not sure exactly if that node is already there. So I don't know if I need to edit, if I need to do an update. So I don't know anything that I need to do. Therefore, what I will do here is I will implement this concept of write ahead log. So the thing is, if we take a look here in this add or update node in pending acceptance async, what we do here is or are these two very important steps. So first, I write to the write ahead log. 
and only then I do an update on my persistence store. Now, in this other case, when I want to insert basically a new node, the node is not already there. Once again, the first thing I do is I write something in a writer head log, so to a file, and then I would add the repository or I would do or I would perform the needed stuff in the database. Now, if for instance, I manage to do this, but I shut down and I don't do this anymore or partly do this, or I don't know if it's done or not, when I start up again, I can look into write a head log, get the information about what I wanted to do, and can then obviously do some checks with the database and define exactly, okay, do I need to update something here? Is the state of the information that I have persisted still okay, is still correct or not? So I can do all this type of logic. If I wouldn't have this line of code here, it would simply not be possible. So let me know if you did enjoy this video and if you find this topic interesting and obviously let me know if you want to see more videos like this in which we'll go into some kind of like more deeper things about distributed systems, not just the usual use Kubernetes and have, I don't know, Docker and run thousands of nodes and that's it. Let's try to understand that and if you are interested in this, please let me know and I will continue. I will keep up with this project and we'll talk about more and more such different patterns or things that we need to think about when we develop distributed systems. Even if we do microservices, we need to be aware about all the underlying stuff and potential challenges. Also, if you are for the first time on the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and a thumbs up button so that this e video might be easier to discover by others. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Don't be shy and head over to the comment section and just leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.